Welcome to Chapter 7 of Esperanza Rising. This chapter is called Las Cebollas, Onions, and we start on page 100. We're here, said Isabel as the truck turned into camp and slowed to a crawl. Esperanza stood up and looked over the cab. They were in a large clearing surrounded by grape fields. Row upon row of white wooden cabins formed long lines connected like bunkhouses. Each cabin had one small window and two wooden steps that led to the door. She couldn't help but think that they weren't even as nice as the servants' cabins in Aguas Calientes. They reminded Esperanza more of the horse stalls on the ranch than of a place for people to live. A big mountain loomed in the east, framing one side of the valley. Marta jumped out and ran towards some girls standing together near the cabins. Esperanza could hear them talking in English, the words hard and clipped, as if they were speaking with sticks in their mouths. They all looked at her and laughed. She turned away, thinking that if Isabel could learn English, then maybe some day she could learn it too. A line of flatbed trucks pulled into a clearing and campesinos hopped down, home from the fields. People called to one another. Children ran to their fathers, yelling, Poppy! Poppy! Esperanza felt a deep pang. She watched and wondered how she would fit into this world. Isabel pointed to a wooden building off to the side. That's where they have all the toilets. Esperanza cringed as she tried to imagine having no privacy. We're lucky said Isabel solemnly. In some camps, we had to go in ditches. Esperanza looked down at her, swallowed, and nodded, suddenly thankful for something. A foreman came over and shook hands with Juan and Alfonso and pointed to the cabin in front of the truck. The women got out, took the babies, and helped Miguel with the bags. Mama and Esperanza walked into the cabin, it had two small rooms. One half of the front room was the kitchen with a stove, sink, and counter, and a table and chairs. A pile of wood waited near the stove. Across the room was a mattress on the floor. The back room had another mattress, big enough for two people and a tiny cot. In between sat a wooden fruit cake crate to be used as a night table, its sides touching each bed. Above was another small window. Mama looked around and gave Esperanza a weak smile. Is this our cabin or Hortensia and Alfonso's? asked Esperanza, hoping that hers and Mama's might be better. We are all together in this cabin, said Mama. Mama, we can't possibly all fit. Esperanza. They will only give one cabin for each man with a family. There is no housing for single women. This is a family camp, so we must have a male head of household to live and work here. And that is Alfonso. Mama sank to the bed. Her voice sounded tired. He has told them that we are his cousins, and if anyone asks us, we must say it's true. Otherwise, we cannot stay. We are next door to Juan and Josefina, so we can adjust the sleeping arrangements. Miguel will sleep next door with them and the babies, and Isabel will sleep here with Alfonso, Hortensia, and us. Miguel came in and set down their valises, then left. Esperanza could hear Alfonso and Hortensia in the next room, talking about the camp office. Mama got up to unpack and began to sing. Esperanza felt anger crawling up in her throat. Mama, we are living like horses. How can you sing? How can you be happy? We don't even have a room to call our own. The talking suddenly stopped in the other room. Mama gave Esperanza a long, hard look. She calmly walked over and shut the door to the small room. Sit down, she said. Esperanza sat on the tiny cot, its springs screeching. Mama sat on the bed opposite her, their knees almost touching. Esperanza, 
if we had stayed in Mexico and I had married Tio Lewis, we would have had one choice, to be apart and miserable. Here, we have two choices, to be together and miserable, or to be together and happy. Mija, we have each other, and Abuelita will come. How would she want you to behave? I choose to be happy, so which will you choose? She knew what Mama wanted to hear. Happy, she said quietly. Do you know how lucky we are, Esperanza? Many people come to this valley and wait months for a job. Juan went to a lot of trouble to make sure we had this cabin waiting for us when we got here. Please be grateful for the favors bestowed upon us. Mama bent over and kissed her, then left the room. Esperanza laid down on the cot. A few minutes later, as Isabel came in and sat on the bed. Will you tell me what it was like to be so very rich? She looked at Isabel, her eyes anticipating some wonderful story. Esperanza was quiet for a moment, clinging to one possible thought. Then she said, I am still rich, Isabel. We will only be here until Abuelita is well enough to travel. Then she will come with her money and we will buy a big house, a house that Papa would have been proud for us to live in. Maybe we will buy two houses so that Hortensia, Alfonso, and Miguel can live in one and work for us again. And you can visit us, Isabel. You see, this is only temporary. We will not be here for long. De veras? asked Isabel. Yes, it is the truth, said Esperanza, staring at the ceiling that someone had covered with newspaper and cardboard. My papa would never have wanted us to live in a place like this. She closed her eyes and heard Isabel tiptoe out of the room and shut the door. The weariness from the days of travel flooded over her, and her mind wandered, from people peeing in ditches to Marta's rudeness to the horse stalls at El Rancho de las Rosas. How could she be happy or grateful when she had never been more miserable in her life? When Esperanza opened her eyes again, it was almost light and she heard Mama, Hortensia, and Alfonso talking in the next room. She had slept through dinner and the entire night. She smelled café and chorizo. The coffee and sausage made her stomach growl, and she tried to remember when she had last eaten. Isabel was still asleep in the bed next to hers, so Esperanza quietly pulled on a long wrinkled skirt and white blouse. She brushed her hair and went into the other room. Good morning, said Mama. Sit down and eat something. You must be starved. At the table... Hortensia patted her hand. You missed going to the foreman's office last night. We signed the papers to live here. We already have work today. Mama put a plate of tortillas, eggs, and sausage in front of her. Where did all the food come from? asked Esperanza. Josefina, said Hortensia. She brought some groceries until we can go to the store this weekend. Esperanza, said Mama, you and Isabel will be watching the babies while the rest of us work. Alfonso and Juan will be picking grapes, and Hortensia, Josefina, and I will be packing grapes in the sheds. But I want to work with you and Hortensia and Josefina. You are not old enough to work in the sheds, said Mama, and Isabel is not old enough to watch the babies by herself. If you watch the babies... Then Josefina can work, and that is one more paying job between us. We must all do our part. You will have a camp job, too, sweeping the wooden platform every afternoon, for which they will deduct a little from our rent each month. Isabel can show you what to do later. What's the platform? Esperanza asked. It's the big wooden floor outside in the middle of the camp. Juan said they use it for meetings and dances, said Mama. Esperanza stared at her food. 
she did not want to be stuck in camp with the children. Where's Miguel? she said. He already left for Bakersfield with some other men to look for work at the railroad, said Alfonso. Isabel came out of the bedroom, rubbing her eyes. Mi sobrina, my niece, said Hortensia, hugging Isabel. Go say good morning to your mother and father before we all leave for work. Isabel hugged her and ran next door. Esperanza studied Mama as she made un burrito de frijoles for lunch and wrapped the soft tortilla filled with pinto beans and paper. She looked different. Was it the long cotton dress and big flowered apron tied at her waist? No, it was more than that. Mama, said Esperanza, your hair. Mama's hair ran down her back in a single long braid, almost touching her waist. Esperanza had never seen Mama wear her hair that way. It was always done up in her beautiful plaited bun, or, when she was ready for bed, brushed out and flowing. Mama looked shorter and, somehow, not herself. Esperanza didn't like it. Mama reached up and stroked the back of her head. She seemed embarrassed. I, I figured out that I can't wear a hat with my hair on top of my head. And this makes more sense, does it not? After all, I'm going to work today, not to a fiesta. Then she hugged Esperanza. We must go now. The trucks leave at 6.30 to take us to the sheds. Take good care of the babies and stay with Isabel. She knows the camp. As the three of them walked out, Esperanza noticed Mama reaching up, hesitantly touching her hair again. When Esperanza finished eating, she went outside and stood on the front step. Instead of facing another row of cabins, their cabin was in the last row facing the fields. Straight ahead, across the dirt road, were several chinaberry trees and a mulberry tree that provided deep shade over a wooden table. Beyond the row of trees were grape fields, still lush. To the right, across a grassy field, was the main road. A truck piled high with produce drove by, losing a cloud of debris. After it passed, the sharp smell told her they were onions, the dry outer skins being shredded by the wind. Another truck followed. Again, the smell bit into her senses. It was still early, so the air was cool, but the sun was bright and she knew it would be hot soon. The hens pecked and poked around the front steps. They must have been happy to be off the train. Esperanza shooed them out of her way as she turned and walked next door. The babies were still in their pajamas. Isabel was struggling to feed Lupe her oatmeal while Pepe crawled on the floor. Splotches of his cereal still stuck to his cheeks. As soon as he saw Esperanza, he reached up for her. Let's clean them up said Isabel, and then I'll show you the camp. First Isabel took Esperanza to the platform she was to sweep and showed her where the brooms were stored. Then they walked through the rows of cabins, each with a baby on her hip. As they passed open doors, Esperanza could already smell the beans and onions that someone had started simmering for dinner. Women were dragging big metal wash tubs beneath the shade trees. A group of young boys kicked a ball up and down the dirt road, stirring up dust. A little girl, wearing a man's undershirt as a dress, ran up to Isabel and took her hand. This concludes the first half of Chapter 7. Please be sure to listen to the second half, where we pick up on page 111. Thank you for listening.